Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome, welcome. We are day 11 in our tag series. We are nearly halfway through and it has been an absolute joy to watch each and every one of you's take on the tags, your interpretations, improvisations. It's also been a joy for me to see everyone saying, I don't have this stamp, I don't have this stencil, but here's what I made. That is absolutely what it's all about because if we create a little bit every single day, all sorts of magical things can happen. I don't know if you found that that's starting to happen for you, but you sort of start to spin off in all sorts of directions. And that's my hope for you. Anyway, here we are, day 11. We are going to be doing snowflakes. And what I did realise is that we have a number of people in different hemispheres who don't see snow that much. So I apologise for that. And next year I shall be very mindful of that. And perhaps we'll have some sunshine in our tags okay so but still as always because you know how much I love bright colors we do feature a lot of brights so today we are going to be using the fabulous sweet poppy stencil snowflake st stencil we've got festive berries which as you know is a firm favorite of red at Christmas time for me in the oxides aged mahogany and candied apple I just feel like this blend of colors will give us the whole variety and interest that we've got happening in this tag today. As always, six and a half centimetres by twelve and a half centimetres. And if you haven't seen some of the earlier videos, please catch them up. They're all available on my YouTube channel or in my Facebook group called Karen for Craft Creative Community. They're all listed at the top of the guide section so that you can refer to them this year's and last year's at any time. So we will get started. I'm using my three by five inch gel plate. I've got my tag. And the very first thing that I'm gonna use is aged mahogany with my smoothies. And I'm just gonna dab dab, these are clean smoothies. I washed them recently. And I'm just going to dab 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 ever so lightly. We've done this technique once earlier in the tag series. Now, I had a couple of people saying to me, oh, I got dark spodgers. And uh, that's because we would have pressed too hard on the edge. OK, so to overcome that, we're just going to dab, dab, dab lightly over and over again. Now, this is going to come out slightly darker than my original tag because I've been chat, chat, chatting. <laughs> but who doesn't like chat, chat, chatting? So what you must be mindful of is not creating an exact frame. You can see I'm blotting it backwards and forwards, lightly, lightly, so that we're going to get a bit of interest here. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of candied apple here and there. This is just going to give us a bit of texture and Hopefully it doesn't look so blocky. And I'm picking up festive berries, which is my favourite red. I think I already said that. Sorry. <laughs> Did you know it's my favourite red? <laughs> OK, so I've dab, dab, dabbed enough. Put the right lids on the right ink pads. And then I'm going to get a bit of water. So as I said, you will have seen we've done this technique for one of the earlier tags. But I think doing it again reinforces the technique. And also if we're using it with different colours, you see how you get such a different look. There we go. Dab, dab, dab the water all over it. And then I'm just going to pop this tag. Obviously, if you're using a bigger gel plate, then... You will want to use a different amount of water. I love this. So therapeutic. And let's see the big reveal. Oh, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. Now you can see I've got a tiny bit of white there showing through. And that's because where I dabbed it, I wasn't overzealous. Gently, gently. But you'll see that will create such a highlight after we've done our stenciling. So I'm just going to move my gel plate out of the way. 
and I'm going to bring my stencil in. And I'm going to pop, this is my magnetic sheet. It holds these lovely magnetic stencils in place. And I'm just going to pop my first one that way. I'm going to take aged mahogany. Now for my stenciling, and you'll have seen me in one of my early videos, I talk about the different blending sponges and tools that we've got, the benefits and where they're best used. But when I'm using these metal stencils, by far, these blending brushes are great. Okay, one. And then I'm going to bring this one. Did you see? I slightly oriented that stencil. Because I'm using the same sponge, I'm just going to use a piece of cloth and wipe it off. And I'm going to pick up festive berries. Making sure I've got a decent amount on my blending brush and just do the same. I'm making sure that I get an even coverage of the ink. So if you followed me before, we did a point set here and we varied the depth of colour. Here, I'm just getting a block amount of colour. So because on my original, I had Merry Christmas here, I'm going to try to leave a little bit of space so that my Merry Christmas stands out. So I'm going to bring my stencil little bit down like that and I'm going to go back in with my festive berries voila look at that how quick and easy so this would make a great card you could do in fact these proportions are quite interesting for a card to be honest so it would make a nice Christmas card. Now the sentiment that I've used is from the large Christmas tree set, this large Christmas tree set, and I'm going to use Nocturne for my stamping. I always tell you not to do that, don't I? I say bring the ink pad to the stamp. It's far more reliable method. And we're just gonna pop this in the center of our tag. And then I just created some black splatters. I just think the black makes it the whole thing pop and gives it a bit of extra depth that if I used a different color, you wouldn't get. So for that, I'm using a bit of acrylic paint. The one I've chosen is from Paper Artsy. It's called Little Black Dress. And then I'm just going to mix it with a tiny bit of water to make it a bit more fluid. That's probably too much, but ne <laughs> never mind. And then I'm just going to lightly, I'm tapping it with the back of another paintbrush. Now, if you have a look at this, you can see that I've got some larger blobs and some smaller blobs splatters. So you get the larger ones by making sure that the paint, whilst it's still a bit fluid, is not too watery. That's how you'll get some decent blobs. The other thing, the factor that will make you smaller splatters versus bigger splatters will be the pressure with which you hit your fan brush. So there we have it. Day 11. Thanks so much for being here. I'm looking forward already to see what you make. Bye for now.